What's up, Gold Squad? Famox here from Game on Your Face, and this is the first player review of NHL 16. I hope you guys like the new look of this review because it took some time to put together. And also make sure you stick around till the end because I'm going to explain some new changes to my review series. But let's get on to it. This year's review debut starring Matt Duchesne and Tyler Sagan. Here's the rules. I will play both players for 7 games on 100 chemistry lines. They will not be assigned any boosts or captaincy cards. The overall grade is based on 5 stats. Puck skills, skating, shooting, physical, and defensive. His current average price is 220k, putting him in the same price range as Perry and Sagan. Puck skills, he gets a 9.5. Duchesne's hands are simply outstanding. It's immediately noticeable how fast and precise he moves his stick. His deking is probably one of the best you can find at this stage of the game, easily making moves that would leave the defenders confused. He also has great passing skills, connecting even through heavy traffic. Though he's not a flawless passer and got intercepted if he tried to force it too much. On top of that, his hand-eye coordination made him perfect for getting the tipping goals. He got two in his seven-game trial period. Skating. He gets a 9. Duchesne is known for his extreme speed, and you can definitely feel it in this game. His acceleration isn't as good as it was last year, but once his rockets kick in, there aren't many players that can catch him. He creates countless opportunities by simply blasting by the opponent's defenses. His agility is also impressive. He had no problem making quick or sudden movements even when going full speed. Shooting. He gets an 8.5. Even though his shooting stat went down since last year, I feel like it was actually improved. His wrist shot is about the same, he maintains that quick release whip and easily picks his spots. However, his slap shot felt like it got bumped up. In NHL 15, he would often miss with the slapper, but now I find it more accurate and also a bit more powerful. Physical. He gets a 7. Just like his shooting, Duchesne's physicality feels improved despite the decreased stat on his card. He still is by no means a tank player, but he wasn't so easily knocked off the puck. His balance was pretty sturdy, and he managed to stay on his feet against most small hits. However, if your opponent lines him up, then he could find his way crashing to the ice. Defensive. He gets a 7.5. Duchesne's defensive ability is essentially unchanged from last year. He still has great stick skills and was solid at intercepting passes. His hand-eye coordination was also handy defensively as he could bat down pucks to stop opposing plays. However, his face-offs weren't the greatest. He won 25 out of 46, putting him at 54%, so he's not terrible, but I wouldn't consider it first-line center material. I would suggest putting him on the wing or centering the second line. Total Points In 7 games, he got 5 goals and 5 assists for a total of 10 points. His overall grade comes to 8.3 out of 10, or 83%. If you were happy with Duchesne last year, then there's no reason that you wouldn't love him this year. His acceleration may not be what it used to be, but his shot and physicality have been improved, making him a better all-around player. He has amazing passing skills and can also double as your shooter. There really isn't much downside to this player. The only thing that brings him down is his balance, but even that isn't that bad. But before you go out and pick him up, Let's take a look at his opponent, Tyler Sagan. His current average price is 220k, putting him in the same price range as Duchesne and Zetterberg. Puck skills. He gets an 8.5. The best part about Sagan's puck skills is his control. He is very strong on the puck and can keep it on his stick even battling through multiple poke checks. However, his stick movement just wasn't as fast as Duchesne's and would get stripped on loose puck dekes if he didn't time it perfectly. Also, his passing is not on the same level. He can connect when the lane is clear, but if you try to get it by a defender, it will rarely get through. Skating. He gets a 7.5. I'd say that Sagan is just a slightly above average skater. His speed is decent, but he won't be beating defenders with his speed alone. It also takes some time for him to reach full stride, and he can't maintain it for very long either, as he gets fatigued quite easily. That being said, you can still put him on a speedy line, and he won't hold you back. He can keep up, but he's not gonna outskate. Shooting. He gets a 9.5. This is without a doubt the best aspect of Sagan's game. His card says he's a playmaker, but I think he's much more effective as a sniper. He has a blistering shot and pinpoint accuracy. If he doesn't score, it's because the goalie made a good save, as he will rarely miss the net. He's the guy you try to find on that one-timer or put out to get that clutch last-minute goal. Physical. He gets a 7.5. 
Sagan was actually stronger than I expected him to be. He's not a tank, but it takes quite a bit to knock him down, or even shake him off the puck. Even when he did lose balance, he didn't fall. He would just be knocked to his knees and get right back up. However, there were still moments when he would get rocked, but it wasn't very often. Defensive, you get to seven. Sagan was okay defensively. First things first, he shouldn't play center. If you decide to get him, put him on the wing because he simply can't win faceoffs. But besides that, he's pretty average. His good hands made him great for intercepting passes, but his poke check wasn't as effective as Duchesne. He didn't get any tripping penalties, but he would sometimes miss a poke, even if it was perfectly timed. Total points. In 7 games, he got 5 goals and 3 assists for a total of 8 points. His overall grade comes to 8 out of 10 or 80%. Sagan, just like Duchesne, is pretty much a complete package. He's not as smooth with the puck and doesn't have that blazing speed, but he has a masterful shot and is stronger on his skates. And even his weakest point, which is his defense, isn't that bad. He would miss a poke check here and there, but he had good discipline and never took any penalties. So picking a winner in this battle is really an impossible task. These guys are so evenly skilled that it will come down to your personal preference. So to sum everything up, if you want the faster and more agile for deking around the ice, go with Duchesne. But if you want the stronger player with a better shot, then go with Sagan. Whichever one you choose, you can't really go wrong, especially this early in the year. Either one of these guys will be a superstar on your team. So that pretty much concludes the first player review of NHL 16. All we gotta do now is discuss how my reviews will work for the rest of the year. As you'll notice, we have the stats icon here and a little tab that says uh, community grade. This is this was a suggestion by iGame for Charity. He noticed that a lot of you guys disagree with what I say in my reviews and that's totally okay. I always tell you guys to let me know what you, your opinions are in the comments of my videos because I know I'm just one guy playing one playstyle. So now when I decide a player for review, I'll tweet it out at my Twitter, um, at Game on Your Face, and you guys can put your input on my reviews there. So say I review Crosby, I'll tweet it out, and I'll average all your grades together to form the community grade. This gives a second opinion to all my review videos and makes it more interactive. And we're going to kick this feature off right now. So if you go to the description, there's a link there for you guys to go grade Mike Bossy. I know not many of you guys will have the chance to play him yet, but if you have, then please go give this a try. Um, another thing I want to mention is that we removed the letter grade system. The last two years, no matter how many times I explained it, there was always someone telling me that I got the letter grade wrong. If you didn't know, I started with Canadian grades, and I had people from US complaining. And then, of course, I went to US grades, and then I had people from Canada complaining. So I decided I'll just remove it entirely and just use the number percentage. And uh, last but not least is Twitch streaming. If you don't know already, I will be playing all my player review games on Twitch. So that way you get a better look of how the player plays and lets me be a YouTuber and a streamer uh, without cutting too much time out of my life. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the description for that as well. So that wraps everything up. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then please leave a like for me. And if you're new, then make sure you hit that subscribe button to join the Goy Squad, where I provide in-depth reviews so you can make informed decisions. I'm Famox, and I'll see you in the next one.